All right, guys. Let's let's talk about a couple more things now. Um, of course, this segment is brought to you by BubbleFast.com. And um, anybody who was at eBay Radio Party um, hopefully got a chance to go talk to Mark and Robin of BubbleFast. All was really awesome to go see them in person. They are just the most fabulousness of people. Um, also, anybody who got a goodie bag at eBay Radio Party that attended, um, Diva Dawn had her little uh, flyer in there with her stress reliever. And you'll note it was a piece of green bubble wrap. So if anybody has never ordered from bubble wrap and got a goodie bag with that in it, you will be able to note the quality of, of bubble fast bubble packaging. Can't officially call it bubble wrap because that's trademarked. It's bubble packaging. Um, really high quality stuff. I'm sorry, but it's better than trademarked bubble wrap in my book. Um, you don't have to use as much of it because it's thicker. It's just a better quality product and you use less. So yeah, it may cost a little more when you compare foot to foot of, of the different rolls, but you're going to use less, which actually makes it the better deal. Better deal. And of course, yes. Oh, by the way, guys, the code Danny for the discount, only good on the website, only good on bubblefast.com. Be sure that if you want to get the extra discount, you go right to their website, bubblefast.com. That's where you not only get the discount, but you are also going to get bubble bucks built up, which you can come back and use on future purchases. Kind of like eBay bucks, they have bubble bucks. So just keep that in mind. I agree. Only place I'll buy my bubble wrap from too. Yep, absolutely. Oh, they also, if you guys have shipping questions, um, anything to do with packaging, shipping, they have the place to go on Facebook for all of those questions. It is a new Facebook group called Shipping Tips and Tricks. And April will put the link to that in there. I highly recommend. I know there's a lot of things to do with shipping and packaging in our day-to-day -day business. And they are there and ready to answer those questions. I believe Eric Nash from Stamps.com is also over there, as well as many, many, many people who know their shipping inside and out. So I definitely Give that a look. And she found it. Good deal. <laughs> so check that out. All right. So I had a couple of good sales this week, despite the fact that I haven't been home. Um, so I got these um, these Disney Mater pickup truck, tow trucks is what they were. I had four of them. I actually got these from DisneyStore.com, believe it or not, when they were on sale a while back. Five bucks a piece is what I paid. And it took me a little bit to get past all of those sellers who'd also gotten them and were selling them really, really cheap. Now, I originally got them to send into Amazon, and because so many other sellers were driving the price down, I decided to put them over on eBay. Put them on eBay at um, $29.95. That did include shipping, so there was about 8 to $10 of shipping in there domestically. Now, what ha ended up happening... I sold three of the four of them overseas. They went international, so they paid the $30 plus shipping, which is really an awesome thing. So uh, four of them, 30 bucks a piece, and they paid the shipping on top, except for one, for one which is so it would take out $10. You know, math. I'm going to make you guys do math. Really good profits. Even though it wasn't a high, high dollar item, having four of them, that depth of inventory, $120, and they paid shipping on most of them. Um, that's... Yeah, one listing, one set of pictures, one listing, boom, done. So I do that quite a bit. If I get something that I originally bought to send into Amazon ends up not being so good because of the competition, throw it on eBay. Um, because Amazon's still not quite up to speed in all the international shipping. Uh, so that is still an advantage of eBay. And one that I really love. Oh, I see we got Miriam in the house. Waving. So good when Miriam comes. Miriam, we have got to get you on the show here soon for a catch-up and let everybody know what all you've been up to. 
Just saying. You've been away far too long. All right. Uh, something else I sold this week. Oh, she said she has a new laptop. So next week. Okay, you're on. It's a date. We're going to have Miriam on the show next week. All right. We got um, this. I actually had for a, a quite a bit of time here. This is a set of brass horses. Uh, you'd look at them and say, nothing really special. I'm sure you guys have seen these at thrift shops and such. Item number. Let me find it. Oh, it's buried. Here it is. 3604 I bought the pair for nine bucks. I think it was like five and four because one was smaller. So nine bucks at a thrift store. I just sold them for $69.95. They went in a priority flat rate. Um, a box, not an envelope. So it was like 10 something to ship. And there you go. Uh, was worth sitting on for a little bit because I got 70 bucks for them. I'll take a $50 profit all day long. Okay, here's something that's really exciting, guys. Um, many of you know that I have started selling over on Etsy as well as eBay. And I basically take my antique and vintage items from eBay and I change a little bit around in the wording. Put them over on Etsy. So I've got about 120 or so listings over there. And I've only been over there a few weeks. I just had my fifth sale. My fifth sale over there. Uh, it was for, remember the little antique Nippon salt dishes I showed you guys on the show a few weeks ago? The little blue ones? It was a set of four of them. And you can see them on eBay. Um, I took down the listing so it shows as ended. But it's item number 3606. 4504-2184. I got full price, 40 bucks. Um, they're shipped out all as well, and I'm really happy with Etsy so far. And I will tell you a little trick. I hired a virtual assistant to do my Etsy listings because all they have to do is copy and paste stuff from eBay over to Etsy. Uh, they are over in the Philippines, and... It doesn't cost much at all. Something you guys might want to consider. And actually, if anybody is interested in doing that, I would be happy to uh, give a referral to the person that's doing it for me is already trained, if that's something you've been looking into doing. Um, it really, I, the sales are picking up over there without me having to do basically anything. So I'm very, very happy so far. Etsy is working really, really hard at getting out there in Google ads and all of that good SEO stuff. Um, so, yeah, hooray for Etsy. I'm going to go for it. All right, I am just, like, getting so far behind here on my segments, aren't I? Yeah, maybe not too bad. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit more about art, since it kind of was my week for art. I'm going to show you the other pieces that I took to the road show. I talked about this one a little bit. Alright, so this is this is the one from the uh, Hudson River School. So anybody familiar with the Hudson River School pieces of, of art and kind of the story behind that? Just curious if if it's if it's well known out there. So some of you do. Okay. Some of you. Um, so this was uh, mid 1800s, started by some true masters of art, and they are known for this style. So this is probably a second generation, is what it's called. Still 1800s. It wasn't one of the masters. Unfortunately, I was kind of hoping uh, when I took it to Roadshow, but it's not. I paid $100 for this at the auction, and I don't know if you guys can see in this, it's got some condition issues. We've got a complete tear right here, another little tear right here. This would need some pretty extensive restoration. Um, but if it were one of the masters, uh, and there's just a handful of very well-known artists that are considered the masters, if it was one of those, it would be worth thousands and definitely worth spending money to restore. It would cost about $1,000 to restore this painting. It could be done. 
Um, part of me wants to do it just because it's a nice piece of art. Um, but it would it would only be if I wanted it for my personal collection and to have it and hold on to it, uh, not because that would up its resale value significantly. In the condition it's in, even though it is so messed up, I'm still told it's worth a couple hundred dollars. So I didn't lose money. I paid a hundred. I can sell it for two to three hundred dollars. It's in its original frame, um, and just. Something to look for when you guys are looking at old artwork. I don't know how this comes through. So this is canvas. And this coloring that you see here really comes from age. Now, there will be some that will try to replicate this and make something look old. But you really, really, really can't. Um, this is an age thing. And... You can see the variations, you know, some darker spots. Um, underneath the frame, there's going to be a difference in the color. They're really, like, all, you got to look at all the, the things put together. Um, the canvas edges are brittle, dry. Um, the frame itself is put together with, you know, little tiny pins and things. If you see, like... Um, Phillips head screws on the back of a, yeah, no, those are not old. Um, so those are just a couple signs to look for. Look for age, look for quality. Uh, even though this is really messed up, the detail in the leaves and the rocks, I mean, you can pick out individual rocks in the painting. Those are all things that make for a, a really talented artist and things you wanna look for, even if something isn't signed. Um, not being signed, is is not a deal breaker uh number one thing with art is i appeal i appeal like okay so my daughter thought these were really ugly um, but overall the coloring the detail um just the way they're put together to an art collector these are these are really nice pieces and because of that i'm going to be able to ask really good money for them somewhere somebody knows who did these and there's always the great fortune of possibly finding that now I had another piece that I took. Ugh. Now this is actually more of a mid-century piece. But you guys know mid-century is hot stuff right now. And uh, is my husband causing trouble over in the chat room? Boy, I'm telling you. You're going to get the boot if you don't behave yourself. <laughs> April, April, you have permission to slap him, okay? All right, good. All right, this is by an artist known as Betty Brinkley. Or, I'm sorry, Betty Binkley. It's on board. I don't know if you can hear that. So it's on board, and um, she put her signature on the back. She was from Santa Fe, New Mexico. I love it when they put stuff on the back. It makes it really easy. She titled this one Grasshopper for obvious reasons. When I bought this at the auction, it just had a look to it that made me go, yeah, you know what? This is a good piece. It's an oil. Um, it's very mid-century. I'll take a chance. I looked her up. She is a listed artist, but on AskArt, there is no information on her previous sales. So it makes it a little tough to come up with a value for her work. Now, I did find in Google, I had found she'd done some sculptures. So I think she's more known for her sculptures than she is for her art, her paintings. And the lady at the roadshow couldn't, of course, she looked up and saw the same thing I had seen and said, well, at auction, I'd give this a value of two to $300. Okay, I'll take it since I paid 25 bucks for it. Um, but I probably, you guys know me, I am going to ask double that um, because why not? That's the cool thing with art. If there isn't another one out there and you have something that has some cool eye appeal and stuff like that, hey, why not? Ask. The worst they can do is never buy it. Do not be afraid to ask your prices, guys. Just go for it. I love art. So one of my rules of thumb when buying art, buy something that you would not mind putting on your wall. 
That's always a good rule of thumb because if you get stuck with it for a year or two, hey, you got a nice piece of art. Ah, so let's see. Beth is Beth is uh, going back to the the Hudson River School. She says that if the painting had the water coming in two streams forming a Y, it would be the New Hope School of Art, also 1800 through 1940s and very desirable. Thank you, Beth. That is awesome information. Awesome. Yay! I do too. I love art, you guys. When I worked at the auction house down in Tucson, the auctioneer happened to specialize in fine art. And he loved to teach me everything he knew, and I absorbed everything I could. Um, so fortunately, I have learned a lot about art um, because of that, and I got my hands on a lot of really good art. And once you start doing that, and you start going and seeing true masterpieces, even though the stuff you're going to find out at thrift stores and yard sales may not be masterpieces, you're going to be able to tell quality versus more of an amateur kind of job, okay? And I have Ask Art, so you can go there, you can see if an artist is listed on askart.com. You just won't be able to see the price. If you ever wanna know, let me know. I'm happy to look stuff up for you because I do have a membership there and I get to pull up prices of previous auction results, so there you go. Oh, who's telling my secrets? Yes, I do have art piled in the hallway, it's still there. We're getting to it. We're getting. I have a new assistant, and he's going to get me all caught up. You guys just wait and see. Just you wait and see. 